Well, Greenock Martin made certain of the second division championship with victory over Dumbarton last week. Today, Murdo McLeod's men had to lift themselves for a winner-take-all confrontation with Stirling Albion at Fourth Bank. The winners could look forward to first division football next season. More than 3,000 fans turned out for a match which Albion needed only to draw. Among them was Ronan McLeod. The tension was evident from the start at Fourth Bank Stadium with both sides chasing the one remaining first division spot. Sterling Albion manager Kevin Drinkle looked like he was feeling the pressure with some off the ball antics in the dugout. Sterling Albion were the first to threaten with this well placed Ian McInnes cross from the wing. But it was missed first by Waters and then unbelievably by Joe McLeod, much to the delight of Dumbarton fans. Just before the interval, Dumbarton's Joe McLeod exerted some pressure from the left. Martin Mooney met the pass sweetly and goalie Mark McGowan just managed to push it over the top. Into the second half and a missed chance for Dumbarton. Paul Dees tried to clear this long ball but pushed it straight into Murdo McLeod who sent it forward to Charlie Gibson who just couldn't hit the target. 54 minutes into the game and this Jim Hamilton throw-in was flicked on by Jim Meekin. An unlucky touch from Albion's Ronnie McAlter and the ball arrived at Hugh Ward, who chested it down before tucking it away in the back of the net. Ward was then booked for over-celebrating, but who could blame him? After something resembling ping-pong, Martin Mooney claimed possession. This long ball forwards found Ward in the perfect position, but this time he missed the target. Almost, a goal for Stirling Albion was to come, but not by their own endeavours. This Tom King touch clearly unsettling his own goalie. Time was slipping away for Albion and the fans desperately wanted a goal, but not from Dumbarton. The second came in the 63rd minute when the Stirling Armoury was looking clearly shaken. Hugh Ward easily broke free down the left, passed into Charlie Gibson who'd all the time in the world to reward Dumbarton with the perfect finish. And Dumbarton kept the pressure on, Hugh Ward cut inside for the shot, McGowan saved and cleared from the feet of Mooney. Finally Murdo McLeod's attempt was deflected, then cleared by Ronnie McAlter. Kevin Drinkle was clearly despondent, but worse was yet to come. Andy Patterson had words with the referee after this decision. And as a result, was dismissed from the field. The final whistle couldn't come soon enough for Dumbarton. Murdo McLeod and his men were clearly delighted to be joining league champions Morton in the first division. <laughs> Celebrations too for the ecstatic Dumbarton fans who parted on after the final whistle and were soon joined by the team. While well, victory meant everything to McLeod, the manager paid tribute to the loyalty and support of the Dumbarton fans. Delighted for them, give them something to cheer about next season, good sides playing a come back to Boghead, but just everybody knows. The day started brightly enough for United with new signing from Notts County Gary McSwagan making his debut, one of no fewer than six ex-Rangers players in the lineup. The Tanadai side almost were given a dream start. Alan Foster giving his own goalkeeper a first minute heart stopper, but the post saving them Barton. Goalkeeper Ian McFarlane was a busy man in the first 45. Here, stand by for this, denying Gary McSwagan. That would have been a great debut goal. It was all united in the early stages. Coming up next for a shot, Rab Shannon. But again, the goalkeeper doing very well. A real let-off for Dumbarton. The man who famously scored for Rangers with his first touch of the ball against Marseille has another dig. But no joy and McSwigan can't believe it. Then a Jim Bett corner causing all sorts of panic in the Suns' defence. Christian Daly's header, Mark Perry's effort, but there was no way through for United. Ian McFarlane was to get no time off for good behaviour. Next in the queue in front of him, Andy McLaren. 
the keeper doing enough. The Barton boss Jim Fallon's half-time talk seemed to work. They were a changed side after the interval. Alan Granger with the shot. Maxwell can't hold it at first. Charlie Gibson sliding in just too late. But United still pressing for an opener. And who else but Gary McSwagan involved in the build-up. Playing it for Mark Perry. Good stop by the goalkeeper. Nine minutes left on the clock and United were punished. Chick Charlie doing well in the left. He floats in the ball for Martin Mooney. Only one thing in his mind, the opening goal. A lovely lob and three points.